For more educational resources like our h and notebooks, check out medicalbasics.com. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about sliding scale insulin. And this is going to be a very beginner's guide to sliding scale insulin. It's going to break down a lot of more complicated topics into as basic as possible. So not entirely how it's going to be done in practice, but it's going to be the most simple way, especially for medical or nursing students, when you just want to learn about sliding scale insulin, but you're not actually prescribing it and you're not changing the doses of it. So we're going to be talking about the different types of insulin, generally just in diabetes in general between normal and diabetic sugars. Uh, and then we're going to talk about all the different types of insulin and also very touching very briefly on dosing in between sensitive, usual, and resistant. And in another video, we'll actually talk about how do we change our insulin dosing and how we can kind of give a, a starting dose for our sliding scale insulin and how to adjust that. So the first things first is what are the different types of insulin? And we can break it down into four different types of categories. The first one being our rapid acting insulin. And these are gonna be Lispro, Aspart, and Glulysine. And they're gonna have an onset of about, a peak time about one to two hours. You're gonna have short acting insulin, which is gonna have a peak time of somewhere around two to three hours, intermediate, which is MPH, uh, that's going to have a peak around six hours and long acting, uh, which we typically don't think of a, a peak. What I want to talk very briefly is these are going to be your long acting insulin. And these are going to be, you kind of can think of it as your short acting insulin. And we use our long acting insulin for our basal insulin. And I'll talk about this in a second. And we typically think of our short acting insulin as going to be things that we're going to use during meals. And we'll see why that's important. Uh, but essentially, it has to do with how long these stick around for. So short acting during meals, we're going to want something that's fast on, fast off. Whereas these long basal insulin, we want something that's going to stick around for a long period of time. So let's talk about the sugars for a second versus normal versus diabetic sugars. So what are the sugars that we would like? I mean, in normal patients, we're going to have a fasting blood sugar of 70 to 100. And fasting is when you're waking up, right? Before you have eaten anything, that's going to be your fasting sugar. We want that typically to be 70 to 100. Postprandial is right after you eat. So right at this point right here, that's going to be we want less than 140. And our A1C is going to be less than 5.7. We're going to switch down to our diabetic patients, and these are going to be individuals who have a fasting blood sugar of greater than 125, and they're going to have a postprandial of greater than 200, and their A1C is going to be greater than 6.4. And pre-diabetic is just anything in that middle, right? Fasting glucose of somewhere between 100 to 125, postprandial of 140 to 199. The goal for diabetic patients isn't we don't want them to be normal. That's not what we want. We want them to be a little bit higher than normal. So their fasting sugar should be somewhere between 90 to 130 and postprandial is less than 180. And the reason why we don't want it to be just like normal is because we're worried about hypoglycemia. So we want them to be lower than their diagnosis of di diabetes. We don't want them to just be above 125. We want them to be lower than that, but somewhere between 90 and 130. And same thing with our postprandial as well. So the next thing and probably the most important concept is the different types of insulin. I kind of touched on this uh, a second ago, but it's broken down into three different categories. It's going to be our basal, and it's going to be our prandial and correctional. And I think a good name for prandial and correctional is mealtime. So we can think of it as basal versus mealtime insulin, and I think that would be a lot simpler to approach. So basal insulin, it's going to be all of our long-acting insulin, MPH, Glargine. Um, these are things that stick around for a long period of time, and this is going to give our background coverage. So it's essentially for those individuals who have high sugars, and we want to bring down the average, we want to bring down the entire average down. It's not going to bring down specifically these peaks. It's just going to take the average and going to bring that down. So everything is going to be a little bit lower. And so that's going to give us good coverage. And we typically, these patients take their basal insulin at nighttime. So they take their basal insulin at nighttime every single day, no matter what. And this is going to lower their average glucose for the next day, and then they'll keep taking it for the next days as follows. The prandial correctional, this is where it gets a little bit confusing. I think if we think about it as mealtime insulin, it's a lot simpler. So mealtime insulin is given right before meals. So you're going to give a certain amount of insulin right before meals to correct for or to anticipate the correction for these high peaks. When you eat something, it's going to have a bunch of sugar no matter what you do, and your sugars are going to peak back up, right? So we want to give a certain amount of insulin right before each of these meals. And it's broken down into prandial 
Mendel and correctional. And this is more of a semantic thing of all of these are going to be mealtime insulin. To the patient, they're not going to recognize the difference between prandial as well as correctional. It's going to be identical to them. Look, it's before meals. It's the same type of insulin, regular lispo aspirate. They're the same thing. The only thing that's different is um, it has to do with the dosing, right? So prandial is a fixed dosing, whereas correctional is based on your glucose level. So it's going to make sense in a second when we actually look at this example. So for this patient, they're going to get 10 units of glargine at nighttime. So no matter what, they're always going to get 10 units of glargine. They're always going to get that right here. Now, when we're talking about meal time, this is all your meal time insulin, right? So it's consisted of prandial as well as correctional. So let's say they're always going to get 10 units of aspart before each meal. And then that's regardless of their, of their sugars. Regardless of what their sugar is, they're going to always get 10 units of aspart. And that's what prandial is. It's, it's a fixed dose. It's something that you're always going to get. And there's, there's caveats to that, uh, depending on if they have very low sugars, then they're obviously not going to get all of it. Uh, but I'm not going to go into that. I just want to say that this is a fixed dose. This is something that you're always going to get before meals, this 10 units of aspart before each meal. Correctional now takes into account of their sugars, right? So if they have a sugar of 100 to 140, it's, they're going to add zero to this 10 units. If they have somewhere between 141 to 180, they're going add two units, 181 to 220, they add four units, and so on and so forth. So what the patient sees, they don't see any of this. All they see is this. So when they have a sugar of 100 to 140, they check their sugar right about here. They then see what their sugar is. Let's say their sugar is 225. So they say, okay, my sugar is 225. That means I'm going to give myself 16 units of aspart. They're going to give themselves 16 units of aspart, and then they're going to eat. But when we look at it, we're looking at prandial and correctional. So we say, well, they were getting a fixed dose of 10 units of aspart, which was, came from the prandial. But because their sugars was 225, they're going to also get six units of correctional insulin. So that's how we got the 16 units. Okay, A patient will have no idea, or they probably have some idea, but they don't necessarily need to know the difference between prandial and correctional. That's more for the provider in terms of how they're going to dose it. And all of these are varying, and we'll talk about that in another another lesson, but essentially you can adjust the prandial and you can also adjust the different correctional. You can adjust whether it's going to be zero units or whether or not it's going to be like increments of two, increments of three, increments of four, whatever it may be. It's going to be different for the patient as well as their, their prandial dosing. So all the patient will see is their actual fixed dose or that's all they really have to know. But this is a good way to think of it of how do you even get to that dosing amount. It doesn't come out of thin air. So now what we're going to be talking about is actually the different types of correctional insulin. So sensitive, usual, and resistant are things that you'll see in the hospital, especially as an inpatient. You'll kind of categorize them based on their responsiveness to insulin. And this all has to do with the correction. Remember, there was a prandial as well as correctional insulin. So they're going to be on some type of baseline prandial dosing, and the correctional will be based on their response to insulin. And really what it is, is it's put into these three different categories. So you can either be sensitive, you can have a usual response or a resistant response. Um, and this is typically just a checkbox in your order set of how you would classify the patient so they know how much insulin they're going to get. And so sensitive just means they have a high response to insulin. Usual means they have a normal response to insulin. And resistant means they have a low response to insulin. So you can see if we just take this, this example right here, at between 221 to 260, a sensitive individual is going to get an additional three units of correctional insulin. Usual is going to get four and resistance is going to get five. And that just makes sense. If you are very responsive to insulin, you're not going to want as much. And what I mean by responsiveness is one unit of insulin is going to to drop your sugar. Let's just say an example of one unit drops your sugar by 50, usual may drop it by 40 and 30. And that, that's not actually how it works, but that's just kind of kind of explaining how that may be, is that resistance, you're going to have a lower response to one unit of insulin, so you're going to require more insulin. And this just goes back to the different types of correctional insulin. So all this is just going to be the correctional. This right here can either be uh, the usual, it can be resistant or it can be sensitive. And that's going to affect um, how a patient will, will how what their dosing will actually be. But typically what we're changing is we're going to be changing the prandial and we're going to be changing the basal insulin. And the patient will just see that their patient dosing is going to be changing and their basal insulin is going to be changing. 
But I just want to kind of explain how that all works and, and how prandial and correctional insulin will work because th- those are common things that uh, you're going to be expected to, to understand. Be sure to check out our website, medicalbasics.com, for more educational resources like our progress notebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.